Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into my channel. Today we're going to take a deep dive into fly casting. And by the end of this tutorial, I hope that the tips that I'm going to give you can help you become a better fly caster. We're going to cover five top things when it comes to fly casting. We'll talk about it, I'll demonstrate it, and then we'll practice together to apply everything we learned. So let's do this. So there are five things you need to consider when fly casting. First is the intended rod tip path. Your rod tip, wherever that goes, will influence where your fly line goes. So in casting, you wanna have a straight line path from the tip. And what I mean by that is when you're casting, if your tip begins to travel too far to one side on the back cast and too far to a different side on the forward cast, your line is gonna follow that lead and the loop is not gonna form well enough to be able to shoot that line out and reach what you're trying to reach in your cast. And in casting, that line is a straight line path. Now there are times in some casts where you do intentionally move the rod tip. Like with a casting mend, when you are mending your line and you do it just before the line reaches the water, a lot of people call that a reach cast, but your line will be influenced by where the tip is traveling. If you've already picked up a bad habit, just get out there and practice. Whether your casting arm is along a straight wall so that you follow that straight wall, thus getting a nice straight line path to your rod tip, or if you're standing in a field and there's a long white line and looking back as you're casting and looking forward to ensure the rod tip stays right along that, that line that's running parallel to you. And that's a great way to establish a straight line path from your rod tip. The next thing you wanna consider is a proper size casting arc. We've talked in several other videos about having a 10 to two rod position while casting. I stand firm and that is a great best practice for anyone learning to fly cast. In a lot of cases when someone's learning to fly cast for the first time, the rod tip goes way too far back or way too far forward and creates these giant loops and tangles in the line while trying to cast. By having that mental discipline of 10 and two, that really does keep your rod in the zone for most types of casts. Now, when you're ready to level up and you're casting for distance, or if you're doing very short casts, your rod position isn't always going to be at 10 and two. For shorter casts, your rod might maybe go from 11 to one. You're not gonna need that large arc to throw the line 20 to 30 feet. But if you're beginning to cast 50, 60 to 100 feet, then you're gonna to have to increase the arc of your rod. And what that means is you're gonna to have to go beyond the standard 10 to two and really get into an arc that's no more than 170 degrees. So really it's more about nine and three. You will increase the rod arc as you increase in distance. I hope that makes sense. So let me demonstrate what I mean. So as you can see here, I'm now beginning to increase in distance. So my rod arc is also beginning to increase from that 10 to two position we talked about, which is a great baseline, to much further, almost 170 degrees. And as more and more line comes out, I have to increase my rod arc to be able to throw that line further and further out. So that is a variable depending on how far the cast is. Next and equally as important is the power you put behind the rod. You don't wanna to put too much power into the cast because the rod may begin to bend unnecessarily from the force that you're putting into that cast. And now you're gonna create a tailing loop. And that's when the rod tip dips down below because it's bending downward and almost makes a U shape while you're really trying to punch out with power. And that is going to create a tailing loop which isn't the most efficient cast and it's gonna to be tough for you to reach those long distances. You wanna have a nice smooth application of force and also know when to apply it. On the shorter cast, you're not gonna have a really forceful rod cadence. On a longer cast, you're gonna increase that force but not so much that you create a tailing loop. And if you're really trying to punch it out there, there's the double haul. You'll employ that technique to help load the rod create line speed without using a ton of force. If you have a sore shoulder and a sore arm, you're probably putting too much force into a cast throughout a day of fishing. If you allow the rod to work 
with you. And of course, the physics of the line, you're creating this nice tight loop. Things just happen with a whole lot less effort. So let me demonstrate. If you notice here, I'm now casting about 40 to 50 feet of line and holding that line in the air. As I slowly increase the distance, you can see the arc is widening in my cast. I'm applying a little bit more force, but not so much to where the rod is bending so significantly that it's creating this tailing loop. So you wanna keep that loop as tight as possible to be able to reach maximum distance without having to apply a ton of force. You're gonna be able to feel it in the rod when it starts to work in your favor and your mechanics are right where they should be. The next thing we talk about quite often is timing. Think of a hand of a grandfather clock. It's important that you let all that line almost completely extend out behind you before bringing it forward. Any lapse in timing will start to create havoc on the cast. And really the best way to get the timing down is watch your back cast, watch it go back. And when it's just about all the way extended, then that's when you start bringing it forward. You're gonna be able to feel when you have that correct cadence. Just wait a little while longer sometimes on your back cast, especially those that are new to fly fishing. A lot of new fly casters wanna hurriedly bring the line forward on the forward cast. Just wait a little while longer, let that line fully extend out before bringing it forward. So it's very important to get the right cadence. And the only way to do that is with a lot of practice. So get out there in a big open field and do some practicing. And finally, the last thing to consider is the elimination of slack line. When double hauling, you always wanna have a tight feel to the line. And what I mean by that is that when you're doing that up-down motion on your double haul, you don't ever wanna come up too quick or be opposite of the timing of what's happening with the rod because you'll create that slack line. And as soon as you get slack line anywhere within the cast, that's where the cast loses all energy and will just fall apart very quickly. So do your best to always have a tight line from your casting hand all the way through the rod and all the way through the cast. It's very important to eliminate any type of slack line. And that's even when you pick it up as well. If you have a bunch of slack line in front of you and you attempt to pick it up and cast, it's really tough to generate line speed with all of this slack line in front of you. If you let too much slack line happen behind you in your back cast, it's very difficult to recoup that cast and send it all forward. So it's very important to have a tight line from your reel to your casting hand if you're doing double hauling through your rod and through your cast. So those are the five things you wanna consider. And I know that's a ton to consider when casting a fly rod. The best way is really just to get out there and practice. So part of how I've improved my cast and even recently is filming myself and watching it back and then making those small adjustments so that your casting just becomes a little more efficient. I wanna stress that you do not need a doctorate in physics to be able to cast a fly rod. You just don't. So there's no perfect cast. And I want you to take everything that we just talked about in this video and apply it to your own casting style. And it's okay if your cast isn't perfect. What's important is you're out there fly fishing, you're getting outdoors, you are exploring this amazing sport. Just get out there and practice these basic fundamentals and your cast will improve. I can promise you that. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. All right, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in on this tutorial, and I hope it helped. And if you like videos like this, consider hitting the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. And feel free to leave any comments down below as well. All right, everybody, until the next time, fish on.